Hey guys, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. I'm going to show you briefly how to set up a simple IPsec tunnel between two FortiGates. gates. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I have a FortiGate 100D that is VDOM'd into two separate routers. Router 1 will function as our quote unquote local FortiGate, Router 2 will function as the remote. Um, general idea is router one will be like the, the headquarter device, if you will, versus the the branch office of of router two. So, um, a couple of things you need to know before you do an IPsec tunnel is there's three ingredients, three things. Well, technically four if you want to break number one up. But first things first, your phase one and phase two, which is why I said you could break it up if you like, have to be on point. Your phase ones have to match identically, with the exception of obviously the remote gateway being the IP address of the other FortiGate. And your phase twos have to match identically, with the exception of the local and remote subnets will flip depending on which device you're on. Uh, number two, you have to have a route for this type of tunnel. We're doing an interface slash route based tunnel. We're not going to do a policy one here. Um, you have to have a route so that the FortiGate knows how to get to the remote subnet. And last but not least, you have to have policy in place that enables the traffic to flow. So for starters, I've already documented, I've taken the time to document the WAN interfaces of each router and the local subnets for each. So router one or FortiGate one is gonna be the 172.16.28.10. And of course, the local subnet on this device that I'm interested in is the 192.168.0.0 and then router 2 is 172.16.28.20 with 10.0.10.0/24 being the local subnet so these are going to be the remote gateway peers for the IPsec tunnel and these are going to be used for the phase 2 so <clears throat> so like we said step 1 you have to make sure your phase ones and phase twos match. So you go to VPN, IPsec tunnels. Whenever it loads, it'll give you the option to create new. Now, 5.4 introduced a souped up version of the wizard. The wizard prefills a lot of stuff. Don't be lazy, do it custom. It'll help you understand the way IPsec tunnels work better. You'll have more granularity with how your tunnel operates. And you can just, you know, do little nuances that you may or may not prefer. So I'm going to name this one two router two. It doesn't really matter the name here. Um, if you have a naming convention that you follow, obviously for your interfaces, I would recommend using that so you remain standardized. Click next. It's going to pull you into the page that lets you break down, you know, what's my phase one information, what's my phase two information. So step one, I need my remote IP. That's the IP of the WAN interface of router 2, or FortiGate 2. It's going to be associated with network 1 because that's my uh, my WAN interface on this one. Oh, sorry, port 1, not network 1. But as you can see, 172.16.28.10. So port 1 is my WAN interface. These devices do not pass traffic through a net device. So what that means is whatever this IP is on the gate, that's the IP that the other side will see. So you can disable that traversal because it's not pertinent. Now if this FortiGate had a private IP and it was talking to a public IP after going through let's say a router or something that was performing some NAT service, you would want to leave this on and, and do that, but that's not the case here. Dead peer detection, just leave it on demand. That just it's a checker. It's going to run through and make sure that the other side's still up. Pre-shared key, I'm just going to type password, all lowercase, because it's just demo. I version, this is a simple explanation, so just leave it on one and set mode of main ID protection. Um, I will release another video that will go into greater depth on what these features are and why you may or may not want to change them. Uh, by default, it gives you multiple proposal options for phase one and phase two. I like to keep it simple. I only give it one option. AES 256, SHA 512, and I take off DH group 5. 
no problem. It means it's going to use a higher encryption, a higher hash for its authentication. Default timer for key time, key lifetime is 86400. Leave it as is for now. You can, there are reasons to shorten or lengthen this that we'll cover in the more advanced video. And that's, that's it for phase one. You have your encryption and authentication, you have your DH group, you have your lifetime. Um, if you had multiple tunnels coming through, you could do local ID and then use ID protection to, you know, prevent outside guys from trying to connect in. So, uh, so you progress on down to phase two. We'll name this two, router two, P2 for phase two. Now, local subnet, remote subnet. The local subnet is this one. The remote subnet is that one. So that's the network on this gate that's trying to reach the other network. And that's the network on the other gate that'll talk with this network. And if you click the advanced section, as you can see, you also have multiple options here. I'm going to do this one the same way. That's just usually what I run with as far as encryption and authentication goes. Um, I like to kick auto negotiate and auto keep alive on. Reasons why? In a lot of cases, if traffic is not traversing the tunnel, the device will tear the tunnel down in an effort to save resources. Uh, most Forti gates these days, you don't really have to worry about that. Most people aren't running thousands of tunnels, so it doesn't really make sense. So, uh, replay detection is on, PFS is on. You can just leave those. Click OK. OK, so step one, phase one and phase two are set. Step two, my device really needs to know how to get there. So I'm going to come through. I'm going to set up my static route. So if you're trying to get to 10.0.10.0 slash 24, you need to use, and as you can see, I have a new interface. 2 router 2, that's the name of my VPN IPsec tunnel. Uh, so you check that. And as you can see, like, when you check the IP, when you check the tunnel, it gets rid of the gateway address because it's just going to use the interface. Click OK. All right, groovy. I got my route. Now, what's rule number three is I need my policies so my traffic can actually traverse the network. IPsec to local. Tie it down. I'm going to be very, very generic with my policy here. This is going to be all, all, allow all. Obviously, the security expert in me wants me to make sure that you, you know, lock it down on a granular level. Only certain services, certain schedules, certain sources, certain destinations, etc. But for the sake of argument, I'll just create it like this. You do not need NAT enabled. So disable that unless you guys have the same subnet on both sides, in which case you'll want to present it differently, obviously. So that's not necessary. That was IPsec to local. So now we'll do local to IPsec. And we're just going to, same thing, just the inverse direction. Okay. Just to verify it's all live. NAS disabled. I got my route. So you got a monitor, IPsec monitor. So the tunnel's listed. It's not up yet. The reason it's not up yet is because everything we just did on router 1, we have to do on router 2 with some slight changes, of course. So I'm going to jump over to router 2. It's easier for me since this is a 100D VDOMed, but, you know, you just log into the other device, go back, create our tunnel. We're not lazy, so we're going to do a custom. And we'll call this one to router 1. Please, please, please come up with a naming convention before you start deploying tunnels. It'll save you so much heartache. <clears throat> it helps if I could type. So that's the IP of the one address, router one. It's going to go over port three, which, as you can see, is the one address. No NAT, because it's not going through NAT. Our pre shared key was password, all lowercase. Click it to verify. 
Ike mode was one on the other one. Or Ike version was one. Mode was main ID protection. So now let's just nuke all the erroneous ones. Because remember, this has to match. On router one, it was AES 256 for encryption, SHA 512 for authentication. Same timer, same DH group, all is well. This is where the flipping comes in. Well, outside of obviously using a different IP address for the remote gateway. See, this is a, the other gate, so the local address is going to be that subnet. And then the remote one will be that one. Come over here. Get rid of these. Set it back to where it matches. And like before, auto keep live, auto connect. Okay, so my phase ones and my phase twos match perfectly. Why is the tunnel not coming up? Because this Florida gate does not know how to get to that remote address. So I got to set up my static route. Create. Router one. Okay. So my static route exists now, saying if you're trying to get to this subnet, go out the IPsec tunnel. Now, number three, policy. We want to be able to initiate it from both sides, so we'll do the same thing as before. All, all, any, all. And local to IPsec. Oh. Oh. Okay, so I got my policies, got my routes. So in theory, if I go here to IPsec monitor, my tunnel should be stood up. And it is. So how do we test this? It's up on both sides. So one way to test it. Now remember this is a FortiGate SV DOM and the two other ones. So I'm going to go to router one. So I'm logged into router one. So the config VDOM and edit router one stuff you can ignore. Uh, the execute ping options source. That's telling me where to execute the, execute the ping from. This is important for your testing. Why? Because my IPsec tunnel, based on the phase two, is only going to allow traffic from 192.168.0.0 slash 24. So I need to make sure I'm pinging from an interface that's on that network, or else the FortiGate is going to try to send it out the WAN using the default route that's never going to get anywhere. And then I'm going to try to ping the remote interface and as you can see it's working and of course if I end and I uh, go into the other side I can do the same thing but tell it to come from here it's going and of course if I come here my incoming data will actually show traffic traversing. So, on a very, very simple level, that's how you create an IPsec tunnel. Now, you can get really complicated with this. You can do mesh networks where all four gates are all connected to one another. You can use concentrators. You can do OSPF and other routing protocols over it to actually build your your routes for you and then of course there's always you know the fact that you can also do something called policy based routes which if you use a FortiGate on a regular basis you're probably never going to want to do I prefer and everyone I know prefers actually interface aka route based IPsec tunnels with FortiGate devices so that's how you set it up um, I will have a more advanced video that actually goes through each individual 
um, item as it relates to IPsec, and it, it's going to give an in-depth explanation as to what each one is, why it's important, why you may want to change it, etc. But you know, for the rudimentary IPsec tunnel setup, that's this is how you do it. So, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below or PM me. Uh, you can check out FortinetGuru.com and actually comment on the pages or send me an email and uh, be happy to answer them. But have a great day and see you next time.